Hi everybody, welcome to the podcast. This is Ina Coveney and you may notice my voice is a little bit raspy. Don't worry too much about me. I am fine. I am a trooper. I had you know, podcast episodes back to back today and we're making this happen because I was not about to reschedule on today's guest. Today I have Tembi Becca on and I can't wait for you guys to hear her story. Okay, so we are here. We are making this happen. So I want to tell you about Tembi. So Tembi is an award-winning real estate investor, marketing strategist, coach, and mentor. And she's been featured in real estate media outlets across Canada and the United States. She's also a mentor with the Kelowna Community Resources, which is a government organization that helps immigrants. And she has a ton of passion for giving back to the community through charity work, through conducting seminars for new immigrants. I mean, she is it, guys. This is the interview of the year. So she also coaches businesses and investors on how to invest and market themselves using the Blue Ocean strategy, which I'm really, really hoping that she can fill us in today. But we have her here and it is my honor to introduce her. Welcome, Tembi, to the podcast. Thank you so much, Ina, for having me. And I'm so excited to share uh, my story and also to hopefully hear back from your audience. Tembi, I can't wait to dive in because there's a lot to unpack here. So why don't we start, first of all, let's introduce you to the audience. Why don't you tell us a little bit of what you do right now? What does life look like for you right now? Right now, as I'm talking, I am packing up to leave for Zimbabwe tomorrow. Oh, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm going to be going for four months. And during those four months, I will be helping women in Africa uh, through empowerment projects and also bringing women from North America to Africa so they could reconnect with their why and rediscover their lioness within. Oh, my God. Okay, I need to know everything about that. But something that my audience really, really cares about is how do you even get here? So I, in 2001... I got married. Well, I actually got married in two, yeah, in 2001. I got married. And um, during that marriage, I, uh, it wasn't a very smooth marriage. I ended up having to leave when I was five months pregnant. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and then I, I stayed, I obviously moved back with my parents. But what happened with that is I, I was, it started something in me. It started um, a fire, a burning desire in my heart to really change the the future for women in Africa because I realized how much abuse there was and how much we were accepting abuse as if it was the normal. So that marriage made me realize that I really want to help women in Africa. And during that time, there was a political instability in Zimbabwe as well. And so as a refugee, I left Zimbabwe with $5 in my pocket and I moved to Canada. Mm -hmm. That was 2001. And I left my 10 month old baby girl behind. And that's really where the trajectory of this whole women empowering started in 2001. And of course, I never really actively got involved until later on in life. But that's, that's kind of the journey. So I moved to Canada with $5 in my pocket. And I worked, my first job was at a car wash. And right after that, I managed to get into nursing school and I trained as a registered nurse. And so when I was working as a nurse, I realized that the money I was getting paid it wasn't a lot of money because, you know, with nursing, you have to do shift work. And also, if I'm going to be empowering these women and helping women in Africa, it's not going to be a lot of money for me to, um, to take and empower other people. I needed to empower myself first. So yeah. that's when I got into real estate. I started investing in real estate and just bought a property by property. And eventually, I was taking some of the proceeds I was making from real estate to try to help women empowerment projects in Zimbabwe. But I realized through that whole process that empowering people is not about giving them stuff. It's about teaching them how to fish. It's not about giving them the fish. And I realized that with real estate, I was really more like giving them fish. I wasn't teaching them how to fish. And that's what has led me to this project where I'm going back to Zimbabwe to teach them how to fish. Okay, first of all, please tell me what happened to your baby. She joined me when she was four years old. There is a good end to the story. <laughs> oh my God, I, I got hung up on that. I'm like, wait a minute, you left your baby behind. 
That must have been really hard, Tembi. It was. It was. It was a very difficult decision. Uh, but you know, sometimes when we make decisions, even uh, in our journey as entrepreneurs, as as business people, as employees, one of the things we have to look at is what is the worst that could happen. And for me, at that time, my situation was so desperate. It was either that, or I probably would have committed suicide. I, that that's how desperate it was. And for me, the worst that could have happened was to create a better future for my daughter. So sometimes as entrepreneurs, as you are listening to this podcast, think of when you make such decisions, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. And I, there is no way I could have let my daughter grow up in that environment and go through the same abuse, I would say, or the same challenges I went through as a woman. I wanted to create a better future for her. Yeah. And I had to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I completely understand that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just in awe right now because you seem to have gone from a completely desperate situation to finding your footing and saying to yourself, I believe that women need to be empowered. So I want to know how you came to that realization. Somebody who's basically in survival mode right? Having to make desperate decisions in survival mode. How do you take a leap from there to saying, I would like to help more women? I don't know if I would call it a leap, but I can definitely say it was a, a survival decision. It's like when you're in the, you know, and if you think of animals, when they're running in the bush, they just, they're just going to chase um, a kudu or whatever it is that they can get because they are so hungry, they need to eat at that time. And I think that was the situation for me. I needed something that was going to provide me with a base. And at that time, it wasn't really about empowering women. It was about my daughter. Yeah. It was, what can I do today so that I can have food to feed myself and to feed my daughter? So it started with that simple state. And so for me, the only option was to leave the country and come to Canada. And so, as I said, I, I managed to find a way to come to Canada. And when I got to Canada, it was, what can I do to take me to the next step of what I'm doing right now, working in a car wash to have a stable job so that I can support and be able to bring my daughter to join me. And once I achieved that step, and yes, at the back of my mind, I still had this thing that I want to empower women in Zimbabwe. And, but you're still doing that little next step until you get to a position where you're like, I am in this position where I can really change people's lives. And one thing which really, for me, was um, a big turning point, it was taking the trip back home. Yeah. Because it is so easy when you're in a North American environment to forget. Yeah. To just feel like everything is okay and to complain about the little problems of our computer not working, our microphone not recording very well yet there's somebody who maybe hasn't had food for days. So for me, going back to that environment, and that is why now I take women back to that environment, even women who have never been to that environment, because I believe that has been the trajectory of growth in my business. When I step aside from my North American life and go into reality in Africa and live with these women and learn how they, they are resilient and remember and be reminded of who I was, 17 years ago, it just ignites some passion and I just can't stop the drive. Yeah. So you went back to school to become a nurse. At that point, had your daughter joined you yet or this was uh, something that you needed to do so you could start making money so you could break her? Yes, I needed to do that. And she hadn't joined me because the paperwork, though immigration does take a while, she did eventually join me when I was... Um, I was graduating my last year in nursing in 2000, yeah, 2005. That's when she joined me and she was four years old. Yeah. So after nursing, you, you have made it. You, you made it out of a desperate situation. Your daughter is with you. You are making money. You're a nurse. You have a job. So what, what were the things that were driving you to say, I need more? I am, this is not the job I'm going to retire from. I need to take another step. What happened? It was my passion and my big why. I believe my big why has always been to empower women in, um, in Africa because of the situation I went through. And because I noticed that the cycle 
was continuing. It wasn't an ending cycle. So even if I had won a million dollars or 50 million or 100 million, whatever that amount is, I don't think I would have stopped because people were still suffering. I went back, uh, girls, teenagers were selling their bodies just to feed their siblings. Mm -hmm. So many things were happening, which was so uncomfortable for me to see. And I knew that, yes, it's not just about me and my daughter, but how can I help empower these girls? How can I change the situation so that they can have a better life themselves? And that's really what was the driving force for me. Did you, do you still have family out in Zimbabwe that you visit? I do have my mom, but I, um, she comes here often enough that I don't have to visit her. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's nice. You actually like get your sense of family. So what happened after you were in nursing school, you got your real estate license while, I'm sorry, after you got out of nursing school, you became a nurse and you went for your real estate license. How was that decision like? Why real estate? Actually, I didn't get my real estate license. So I'm not a realtor. I'm a real estate investor. So what happened is, so I continued, I was working in, in nursing and I remember right after shift took actually the first week of nursing, it was even my first week as a registered nurse. I, there was this lady I worked with and um, she was older and uh and she was limping and we're working night shift night shift is really hard on the body uh mm -hmm. and so i'm looking at her i'm like oh my god and she's been she's telling me oh i've been at this for 22 years and i'm like holy excuse my language but yeah, yeah. <laughs> holy shit yeah. 22 years of doing the same thing yeah and then and then i remember we had a conversation about pension and and she's telling me her pension was probably going to be 1800 which is like less than the nursing salary. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I, if this is the case, if this is the situation that I have to work 25 years just to get to where she is and limp to just <laughs> go give my patients pills, I am out of here. Yeah. So that was one of the driving forces. And the yeah. other driving forces was like, you know, I had this idea that the moment I become a nurse, I'll have so much money, I'll never be broke again. Right. And that didn't happen. That didn't. <laughs> it didn't happen. So I was like, huh, I thought nurses, because everybody says nurses get paid a lot. Nurses get paid a lot. And I'm like, hold on a second. And actually I was making maybe 80 to 90,000 a, yeah. a month. And still, it, no, 80 to 90,000 a year. Yeah. And still things were not that, that balancing. And I, I have, um, as I said, I had this passion. I helped so many people back home in Africa. And I'm like, my money will never be enough to help all these people. I just, just to pursue my why of helping people, just to pursue my why of spending more time with my daughter. Because remember, nursing is shift work. Yeah. So that means I'm not seeing her grow up. I'm at work when she's sleeping. So what can I do to create income? And fortunately, within that first week, I see, I, I met a newspaper magazine ad, which said, get out of the right race, invest in real estate. So I didn't plan to go into real estate. Real estate chose me yeah. <laughs> through that magazine. And I was like, huh, I should attend this. It was a free seminar uh, for rich dad, poor dad, and yeah. Robert Kiyosaki, for some of you who've heard of him. Yeah. And I attended that seminar and I was, I was on fire. Nobody could stop me after that. Yeah. Like I literally read and drank real estate morning, day and afternoon. And I started buying properties, one property at a time, you know, until I was able to quit my job. Yeah. And then 2008 crash happened. Well, that didn't, uh, that didn't affect me actually, because I was starting in the real estate journey. Yeah. So I was still at that time, maybe buying, I still have properties I bought in 2008. So it didn't affect me. It happened, but it was, it wasn't, I honestly can say I wasn't affected by that. So I just continued buying properties and uh, yeah. Yeah. And now, well, now you are getting them at a good price because now that everything just, you know, the, the bottom fell off the mortgage uh, industry right now, the prices went down. So it was actually a good time to get in. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time to get in. It was a good time to get in. I mean, there's, as I said, there's a couple of properties I bought during that time, which are still not good. Yeah. But for the majority, it was a good time. 
So I actually, I read that book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. My family, like out in uh, Chile, my, some of my cousins, they've read that book and they're in love with it and they're investing in real estate properties. I'm yet to do that. I'm still like just in like entrepreneurial world. So are you still a real estate investor? This is still uh, where your bread and butter is. What, what I'm trying to understand is how did you go? What is the next step on your journey? How did you go from real estate investor to entrepreneur where you're coaching and mentoring others? What was that transition like? Yes, yes. So, okay, so I invest in real estate and what happens is um, in 2013, 14, I moved to this place called Kelowna, which is beautiful because I had, you know, I didn't have to work and I, I had kind of created a, a good, in, a decent income for myself. And so um, I'm listening, but I, there was this deep desire in me that I kind of wanted to do more. You know, it's funny how we always look ahead and say, I can't wait to retire. But the moment you retire, it's boring. And mm -hmm. you're like, what, can, what else can I do? What more can I do to change this? So I was listening. So I started listening to real estate um, CDs. And I came across uh, this guy called Peter Kitch. And he said, if you have the ability to make more money and change the world, and you're not doing so, you're selfish. I remember those words. Like, I still remember where I had them. I was tending to go towards my house. And I remember, I was like, oh, my God. I need to make more money to help women in Zimbabwe. Yeah. I need to make more money to help people in Africa. And so I started looking at ways, what can I do to, I started doing some more deals, some quick 10 deals. But then, as I said, it was still about making this money and giving it away instead of making it and empowering them. Yeah. So I, um, I started researching and I came across Jeff Walker. Some of you might know him. He is uh, the father of online marketing. And I came across him. I was driving and something popped up and I came across him. And he, he was teaching people how to teach others how to monetize their passion. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my God, this is what I need to help women in Africa with. I need to teach them how to invest in real estate. Yeah. That's really how it started. I was like, I need to teach people in Africa how to invest in real estate. And so I was like, okay, so I'm in, I'm going to go and teach them how to invest in real estate. So I started this whole online thing. That's how I got into the online marketing world, Te teaching people how to invest in real estate. It was a great success, great success. So many uh, big uh, results. However, there's something, it wasn't reaching the person I wanted to impact mm -hmm. because when it comes to real estate, usually people are attracted to you, probably have a little bit of money already. Right. And so you are, now you are just kind of the people who I, I, I cry before bad for and the people who really impact me are those women who are stuck in abusive relationships because they have no penny and they won't be thinking of investing in real estate right now. Mm -hmm. They are too desperate for that. They need to make money. Mm -hmm. And so that was the thing. I had conflict with that. And I struggled and struggled. And then last year I went to Zimbabwe and I met, I had a story of this girl, her name was Melissa and she was 24 years old and she had committed suicide because of poverty and all that stuff. And that story really hurt me so much. And I decided, you know what? I need to do something to empower these women. And I came back and I've been collecting computers. I collected, started collecting computers so that I can teach them how to even be virtual assistants online and to just do some jobs online. Then they can take that money and maybe think about investing in real estate later on. But for now is to create income so they can have food to put on their table for tomorrow. Yeah. How did you get started with that? What were the steps? I started with a podcast because I had no idea what to do. I started with a podcast. I was like, okay, I'm just going to start a podcast and I'm just going to interview women who have broken through yeah. and see how they did it and, and share it with these other women. But of course, as I said, most of these women who I'm trying to impact don't even have access to a podcast. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay. So on top of that, I decided I hired somebody locally in Zimbabwe to help me to uh, recognize these women and tell me what the challenges they were going through and what we could do to really empower them. And really it was for them, it was about getting a job and we just want to get a job. And so the, cause unemployment rate in Zimbabwe is like 95%. Yeah. So the job I could create, which I know they'll get it is online marketing. 
And so I started collecting computers from friends and I'm taking those to Zimbabwe with me. And as I said earlier on, I also take women from North America to Africa because I thought, okay, so they need more than just a job. They also need, um, some of them have gone through abuse. Some of them have gone through self-esteem issues. And so they need somebody who can come out there and see the good in them. Yeah and see the potential in them. And so I take women from the Western world who uh, have skills and some of them are just women with a good heart really. And we'd go on a safari, on a 12 day safari. And during that time we work with these women, we empower them with more than just the financial skills, business skills, um, thinking outside the box, seeing the potential in them. And, you know, mental skills, psychological skills, and we help empower them. And at the end of the day, they actually empower us more because there's so much to learn from these women. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Because somebody listening to this is thinking, this is exactly what I should be doing. And I would like to just for you right now to pause and see how can people get in touch with you right now if they wanted to be one of those women to go to Zimbabwe with you? The best way is to go to Safari tembibega.com okay and i'll put it in the show notes too because i'm gonna tell you something i follow a lot of people who have gone out and done charity work overseas who have gone to india and seen extreme uh, poverty who have been on uh you know tours of different areas of the world and they come back completely changed and these programs that they're a member of you know they're uh, you know, it may be very expensive to buy into, for example. Like um, right now, the one, the only one that comes to mind that yeah, you know, I, I follow a lot of people who are in it is the Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership, right? He takes millionaires and puts them in these situations so that they can have an appreciation for the world and a different perspective of the world. So when I see that, I'm like, I want to go and find these things out too, right? But I do not have the $85,000 that it takes to buy the Tony Robbins membership. And now that I hear you talking about it, I'm like, oh my God, here is an entrepreneur who will take you and your big heart and go and actually help women directly. And you've already done the work of identifying this demographic. It's not just like, okay, just donate money to the Red Cross, which I'm not dissing, you should donate money to the Red Cross anyway, but it's not just blindly giving money away, it's actually impacting these women's lives. So what the work that you're doing is so important, Tembi. Thank you. Yeah, if any, yeah. if anybody wants to get in touch with Tembi, safari.tembibeka.com, I will put it in the show notes. So we brings you now to nowadays where you are a coach for business investors. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that arm of your, of your, uh, of your business and um, what is the blue ocean strategy? <laughs> I love that. Okay. So um, I don't know if you read the book, the, uh, I don't know if the, the topic is blue ocean, red ocean strategy. Uh, it's a book. Um, it is a book which was written by one of the entrepreneurs. I don't even remember the author, believe it or not, right now. But um, basically, what it does is it shows. I'll just give you an example of an ocean. So when you look at an ocean, it's blue, right? It's beautiful. It's clean. It's nothing. If somebody jumps jumps into the ocean right now, let's just assume there's a shark. Obviously, there's a shark in oceans. But um, if somebody dra- jumps into the ocean, the shark bites, and there's tiny little red blood and that it doesn't show as well but if hundred people jump into the ocean or a thousand people jump in, jump into that same spot the sharks are going to come by and they're just going to start biting people and the ocean becomes red and mm-hmm. now it's a red ocean mm-hmm. so what it means is whatever in your business you are doing make sure you're doing it in a blue ocean strategy where mm-hmm. most people haven't jumped into like if you look at our online marketing right now Everybody is doing Facebook ads just to, to, to get their name out there. Everybody is doing something similar. Set yourself apart. What is it that you can do without following somebody's formula? I mean, formulas are great. Don't get me wrong. Formulas are great. But what if you followed your own intuition? Because when you follow your own intuition and you follow your own passion of what you like to do, then you will create your own blue ocean. 
yeah. instead of going into somebody else's red ocean. So that's what I do with businesses. I say, okay, so what is it that you really want to do? What is it that you really are good at? What's your unique ability? As Dan Sullivan puts it, what is your unique ability? Why don't we take that unique ability and use that to create your own income? Yeah. Why don't we take that unique ability and use that? So that is what I mean by blue ocean strategy. So I take business owners and business um, women, women business, and I say, what's your unique strength? What are you good at? Because I am so tired and, uh, you know, of hearing people telling you, you have to do Facebook lives every day because that's what's working right now. No, 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 no. You have to do Instagram stories because that's what's working right now. No, no, no. You have to do webinars because that's what's working right now. Guess what? I don't like doing that. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Show me what I can do, mm -hmm. which works for me. Mm -hmm. And that's how you do it. Like, show me what I can do, which works for me, which is unique to you and which also aligns with your why. Yeah. Because we all have a big purpose. You have a big purpose. I have a big purpose. What is your big purpose? What can you do that aligns with your big why? And you'll be surprised. It has nothing to do with following a formula. Yeah. It has something to do with your passion. I love it. I love it. And I'm so glad that you described it for me because I have seen the name Blue Ocean Strategies out there. Nobody had explained it what you just did. So thank you. So this, I mean, this has been extremely enlightening for me, uh, Tembi. I can't thank you enough for coming on the podcast. And I want to know how can people reach you? What should they do if they want to reach you? So the best way uh, to reach us is to go to tembibega.com. That is my website, tembibega.com. If you would like to find out more about how to do your own blue ocean strategy, create your own thing. And one of the things I really say is a path to creating your blue ocean strategy is going to a third world country. It doesn't have to be Zimbabwe. It can be any other country. I just want everybody listening right now to think of how can they go to a third world country not as a tourist, but as a local. Go and visit the local people because not only will it change your perspective, yeah. it will show you how resilient you can be. Mm -hmm. It will give you so many ideas. It will expand your businesses. The women I teched with me to Zimbabwe, every one of them, I can tell you right now, every one of them comes back with a different perspective and with a big breakthrough. Yeah. That is one of the biggest breakthrough they get just by taking this trip to, to Africa because they just connect, they just connect with nature and they connect with the, they rediscover their lioness within, like whatever it is that you have, because we all have this strength within us. We all have this crazy unique ability, which everybody will be like, Oh my God, I can pay you hundred K just to do this. But we, it's hidden. It's hidden because we've been, pampered and we've been softened in this western world and i'm not trashing the western world it's got its good things but there's a lot of things which it has hidden within us and we yes. need to rediscover that lioness within so yes. to ask to answer your question tembibega.com uh, and safari.tembibega.com to come with me on the safari trip yeah and i will put the link in the description but this is how you spell your name t-h-e-m-b-i B H E K A dot com. Dot com. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Tembi, thank you so much for sharing this with us. I bet you changed a couple lives today. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Ina. And have fun in Zimbabwe. I will. All right. Talk to you soon.